All right, guys, so welcome back to a brand new video. So up until now, uh, we have pretty much done a lot of stuff with Nest.js. I've shown you guys all the basics with controllers, with services, with repositories when we were using type RM. And we went into more advanced stuff, such as setting up authentication. Now, I feel like with every application, if you're building an application that requires users to log in, authentication sessions uh, and passport, uh, these are very uh, important things to understand. And in Node.js, Passport's really just the go-to when it comes to authentication. If you're using something like Spring, you would use Spring Security. Okay, so it's done differently with every single framework. But for us, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a session store in this tutorial because right now we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, I've shown you guys how to set up authentication. I've shown you guys how to set up sessions with Passport. Uh, I've shown you guys how to set up the serialize and deserialize uh, functionalities. And realistically, we've covered pretty much like 90% of all the things that you'd really need to set up an application that can have authentication. The final thing that we need is a session store. And what a session store is responsible for is it's responsible for storing session data. And whoever the current logged in user is also falls in, also falls under the category of session data. There's, there might be other things too, such as, uh, you know, like the, the user's current a session for their cart. And you might want to save that to the database as well. Okay, you might want to save, uh, you know, whatever current, you know, items the user might have, uh, you know, or whatever, whatever it is. Basically, ways that you can make your application more, uh, like, you know, interactive, more, uh, give the user a better experience. A lot of times you can use uh, session data. You can also save things on the cookie side as well. Okay, uh, but I ideally for when it, when it comes to authenticated users, you do not want to set, you do not want to save that stuff on the, uh, on the browser or, or as a cookie. You want to save that on the server side because it's a lot more secure. Now, uh, for us to set the session store, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a package called connect type ORM. And that's because we are using type ORM uh, for our sessions. Uh, if you, uh, if you use something like MongoDB, they have packages for that as well. You can also use Redis and Firebase if you want to, uh, or MySQL, but we'll, we'll stick with a uh, connect type ORM. So let's go ahead and install that package. So um, we'll need to go ahead and install connect type ORM. And uh, I think that's pretty much it, yeah. So let's go and do that. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, start up the server again. All right, so they have a nice example of how to actually set this up, and it's ridiculously easy on how to get this set up. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So all we need to do is we need to go to the main.ts file, and there should be a property called store, and this is where you want to actually set up the store. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new type ORM store, or new instance of type ORM store. I'm not sure why that doesn't want to pick up an IntelliSense, so we'll have to import that, so that's fine. Let me just do that real quick. Okay, cool. So we have the type ORM store. Um, let me see. Just make sure everything is fine. I'm just a little bit confused why they don't import that on their documentation, but maybe they just assume. Anyways, it's fine. So we'll create a new instance of type ORM store. We need to pass in the options. So there's a couple of options you can pass in. You can pass in the cleanup limit. Uh, you can pass in limit subquery, and you can also pass in the TTL. We're not going to pass in any options, okay? Uh, but if you want to, what you can do, well, I think what this will do under the hood is it will clean up uh, existing sessions that, uh, that, that exist in the database, but that might be expired or might be invalid, okay? So you can have that uh, do that for you. Uh, and the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up a uh, we need to set up an entity, okay? So we need to actually pass in a uh, a repository in here. And in order for us to get that set up first, we need to set up the actual entity. So what I'll do is I'll just create a entity called session.ts, and it's going to look similar to how you see it in this documentation right over here. So we're going to go ahead and create a class called session. And they have an interface called iSession. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then what we need to do is we just use the index decorator. 
and then we'll set this as column and then this will basically be the expired at property so we'll just do uh date not now or you can just do date but since it's a numeric value they're doing date dot now so i'll give us the actual uh time i think in seconds i think or milliseconds next is the primary column so this is going to be the id of the session so that's so that's the id that uh that express session generates for us and we're just going to see if it's database so we'll set this to be a var char and the length will be 255 and we'll just set the id to be a string Uh, what's going on over here? Type oh. And one more column will be text. So this is where it's gonna save the actual data. So we'll just save it as a JSON. Okay, so um yeah, that's pretty much it. Now that we've done that, we just need to annotate the session class with the entity decorator. And uh, we'll go over here in the bootstrap function. And up on the top, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll just get the session, whoops, session repository. And what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and call get connection. Um, and we're going to call get repository. And we should be able to just get the repository like this i've done this a couple times before so should be fine and we're going to go ahead and import the session entity because there's a couple of other interfaces in class name session but ours comes from type arm session which is uh from the type orm folder right over here i'm actually just going to rename this as session entity just to uh prevent it from just to you know make sure we don't get confused Okay, so this should be fine. And then now all we got to do is just call dot connect and pass in the repository. And we shouldn't get any issues. Let's just double check. Okay, so it's saying no repository is found. So I think the reason why is because um, I think it's because we haven't connected to the database just yet. And in order for us to actually get the repository, um, because type one doesn't know anything about that yet, we actually need to. I think actually if we call get repository instead, I think this should be more than fine. I don't think we need to call get connection. Yeah, I think uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, let me see. So it's saying no repository for session entity found. Uh oh, wait, I forgot. We need to uh whoops, my bad. We need to actually register the entity. So uh, yeah, let me do that real quick. So uh, let me go ahead and import. Okay, and then we will import that. And then we import that as well. And then that should do the trick. So it should be able to just import it like that. Perfect. Okay, so the sh error should go away. Perfect. It went away. And if I do describe or not describe show tables, we should see the session entity table. Let me actually rename that. So I'm just going to pass in an object inside the entity parentheses and we'll just call this sessions. There we go. We can. Uh, I'll just leave it alone for now. Okay. Cool, so now that we have a session store, let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to log in. So when I log in, you're gonna see that uh, we get a 201, or it should be 200. Since the post request by default, this will always send a 201. Okay, and now if I go ahead and if I select from the session table, you're gonna see that my data is in the database. You're gonna see that I have the session, uh, the, the session's expiration date, I have the session ID, I have the uh, have all the data, the, all the session data saved. Now, if I were to uh, restart the server, so I restart the server right now, and watch this, uh, you can see that the session state is still going to be in the database. However, I try to access this endpoint, you're going to see that it's still going to give me 200 OK because our session is saved in the database. Okay, so we're not using in-memory session stores anymore. We're using the database to store sessions. 
Now, uh, this session should expire anytime soon because we had the session living for only one minute. Uh, so it should expire in probably a couple of, uh, let's see. Yeah, it just expired just now. So if I do that, you can see the session's not there. So if I try to send a uh, request again, you're going to see that the session has expired already. Okay, and since the session expired, it's going to give us a 403 forbidden. Okay, uh, now, since we don't have any options for, um, since we didn't pass in any options for our session store, it's not going to attempt to do anything such as like clearing the database uh, for session stores. Okay, so it's not going to clear up like any uh, unused sessions. Uh, typically, you probably should, um, mostly because um, if you don't, you're just going to have a bunch of sessions that live in the database that probably are not even used. Uh, so what you can do is, let me actually read the options over here. So it says, clean up limit. So for every new session, removed this many expired ones. Uh, so yeah, so pretty much every single time you create a new session, it'll attempt to remove. Uh, at least, so the max, you can, you can set a max, so by default, it's zero. Uh, so what we'll do is, just for now, what we'll do is we will set the cleanup limit to, let's do it to 10. Okay, so let's watch this. So uh, it should stay in the database. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and create a new session by logging in. So by log in right now, let's go over here. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. It's saying cannot set headers after. Huh, seems that's, that's very interesting. Did I mess something up with my uh, route or something? I think. I think maybe. I think I might know what the issue is. Yeah, I think it's because I removed that request decorator. Yeah, I'll just remove that. I'll just remove that entirely. Uh, and I'll just, I'll just return. Uh, well, I think this will be fine. I, th I think that's probably why it was, it's giving us an error. Uh, let's try again. Uh, let's see. So it seems like it's giving us an error now. I'm not sure why, but uh, so it's calling serialized user. I think it might be because of the, uh, I think it might be because of the options, I think. Uh, yeah, that, that's really weird. I don't know why that was. Uh... I'm not sure why that was giving us an error for cleanup limit. Um, that's very interesting. Very interesting, actually. Probably again. So let's try here. So we should get a forbidden resource. If I try to, yeah, okay. I think it's because this cleanup limit is screwing it up. All right, now if you guys want, there are other additional options that you can add. Uh, so for example, if you want to set a cleanup limit, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, if you want to do like a, a limit subquery, you can do that as well. Um, there's also a TTL for how long the session time or how long the sessions live. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. I just want to show you guys how the session store works. So every single time now that if we log in and if the server goes down and if it goes back up, uh, you'll see that uh, we'll stay logged in. So right now, if I, again, once again, if I restart the server, okay, if I destroy the server, restart again, and if I make a request to here, it's going to give us a 200 instead of an actual 403. Before, we were using memory store, okay? And when the server restarts, everything in memory is going to be gone. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, understood this video. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. And definitely join the Discord server if you'd like. Uh, to ask some questions and that's gonna be pretty much it for this video um i think this is going to conclude a uh, majority of the main things with nest.js uh if i'm really looking at the other things there's really not that much uh 
there's really not that many other important, crucial things that we'll really need to cover that has to do with authentication because the rest of the stuff really is outside of authentication. So, for example, we'll cover other things such as file uploads. We'll cover uh, interceptors. We'll also cover uh, events, maybe even logging and uh, MongoDB as well. And we'll probably, other, we'll probably cover some GraphQL. But uh, hopefully this whole tutorial gave you a good idea of how to actually set up a full stack app. Well, not, not, not full stack, but at least set up like an entire like uh, enterprise level ready, in my opinion. Because honestly, like with this type of application, you pretty much have all the bare bones ready to set up your backend. Because you already have password hashing, you have uh, session stores, you have authentication. Uh, now all you got to do is just focus on implement the rest of your business logic. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Um, if you guys like this video, definitely uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.